chocolate fudge and red balloons, argyle socks and the blue suede shoes, the stroll in Central Park with you, bare feet on sands in Malibu, the drinks at two in the afternoon. I'm in just that kind of a mood. Holding hands, love's pantomime, shooting glances, time to time. First off, I didn't take any pics of how with the lower jaw of this tool. I'm really sorry, guys. That's part of my way of constructing things. Most of the time, I must build it in one go to make good use of how everything was planned in my brain. I never make any drawings. All measurements and the general look are only in my head. Drawings would take too long for me and I don't have any patience. They could actually stop me from building what I had wanted to do in the end. These pictures show the construction of the upper jaw. It doesn't matter too much because the basic design of both jaws is identical. The difference comes at the point where the hinges are built. First thing to do was making some plywood. I used three layers of pieces of wooden spatulas. I used PPA glue to glue them crosswise. Cloth packs were used to hold the pieces in place and make for a strong bond. Here you can see how I made the cutouts for the hinges. I used the razor saw for the cuts crosswise to the wood grain. These cuts had to be done first to avoid splintering of the wood when you cut the spatulas lengthwise. Then I used the knife and the aluminum ruler for the cuts along the wood grain. Last step was sanding the cutouts properly with a flat file. For the prototype I used pieces of toothpicks. They made the molds for the corrugated metal. And here I made the first mistake. Measuring of the distances between the pieces went wrong for at least one of the toothpicks. I scored lines into the jaw with the back of the number 11 blade along the ruler. Then I used a triangular file to widen the channels. After that I used a round file to give them the proper shape for gluing the toothpicks into place. It was time to glue the hinges of the upper jaw to the cutouts. They were made from pieces of my omnipresent coffee stirrers. Then I sanded the hinges and the adjacent edge into a round shape. That was necessary to make the rotation of the upper jaw possible. Without doing that it would have been impossible to open the press. That's something you should keep in mind when you construct tools like this. Then I glued the front trim for the upper jaw into place. Wedding this small piece of wood was needed because of another wrong measurement. Now it's and here you see the right side trim for the upper jaw. My cake and need it, it was about time to show you the lower jaw and here it is. The latch on the left hand side became necessary because of another wrong measurement. And the same goes for the two small pieces of coffee stir on the inner side of the left hinge. I'm in just that a kind of a move. First dry fitting of both jaws. As you can see the fit is almost perfect. At least that turned out the way I wanted. The four parts of the hinges sit properly for drilling. That was another success. At that moment I had already decided to use this press as a prototype. I made note of all my mistakes and started improving the construction in my head while I was working on this version. Then I sanded the bottom of the lower jaw smooth and even. I wanted to add an anti-skid pad later. more dry fitting. This is something you should do frequently because it's the best way to see problems before they become mistakes that are difficult to correct. I guess you're used to doing it from modeling anyway. 
Here you can see that I sanded this part of the side trim thinner. I had to do it for a smooth actuation of the hinge. This corner of the side trim had to be sanded into a round shape accordingly to the complete rear edge. Once more the two corrections are made for a proper fit of both jaws. The side trim on the left side of the upper jaw has a different shape. It has to accommodate the latch of the lower jaw, of which I already knew I would eliminate it in the final version. Then I glued a piece of wood to the rear edge of the upper jaw to give the hinges more stability. This was transferred to the final version with a little change, but you see it later. Its lower edge was also sanded into a round shape to achieve a smooth transition between this piece of wood and the rear edge of the jaw. I noticed too late that one of the toothpicks was too short. The useless latch was a waste of time and wood. Time to draw the holes into the hinges. Their position was marked with a pencil. I used this pinpointer tool to poke little indentations into the markings. They would keep the drill bit from moving accidentally. I used a 2mm drill bit and that was another mistake. I used this piece of carbon fiber rod as a pivot. Here you can see what happened after drilling the holes with a 2mm drill bit. The wood splintered and I had to use tiny bits to close the gaps. I used the A-glue and I covered the complete hinges with it. The completed hinges. As you can see the pivot sits higher on the left side, but at least it's straight and there's no tension on the hinges. The pivot was secured to the outer hinges with the A-glue. Another view of that area from a different angle. And another different angle. You can see that the wooden parts of the hinges are glossy because of the CA glue. The press opens nicely. Nothing's in the way. That went well. The bad measuring is plainly visible. I still can't understand why I didn't notice it while I was building this jaw. The aluminum foil comes from a tray for a fish meal from the oven. It's quite thin but thicker than the usual household aluminum foil. You could also use lead foil or the foil of empty toothpaste tubes. All that's necessary is cleaning the foil thoroughly and flatten it out with the edge of a piece of wood. Then the foil was placed onto the lower jaw of the press. It was aligned with the edges of the jaw. I closed the press tightly. The excess foil came out from under the front edge of the upper jaw. And here you have it. The first sheet of corrugated metal. I cut off the excess and measured it. If I was planning to use this version of the press, the pieces of aluminum foil had to be cut to 30 by 27 millimeters. At first sight, the corrugated metal didn't look too bad. When you take a closer look from the side, you can see how the mistakes I made affect the result. The sheet is uneven and I didn't like it at all. Still, this prototype is absolutely usable if you take the time to measure precisely. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to add an anti-skid pad to the press. The bottom was already sanded smooth and even, so I cut a matching piece of coarse sanding paper. I used contact glue, but you can also use PVA glue or double-sided tape. Two last picks of the prototype. Since I explained most of the work in the first half of the video, I concentrate on the differences now. And I'll give you all the information you need to build this final version. Let's start with the lower jaw now. 
I did a better job on marking the cutouts for the hinges and I did a much better job on the actual cutouts. This piece of wood is necessary to keep the jaw level after gluing the round pieces for the molds into place. The first real difference is this piece of wood. It will be the counterpart for the rear round piece of the upper jaw. I scored a straight line lengthwise with the back of my number 11 blade. Then I used the triangular and the round file to sand it into a kind of trowel. This makes for a proper shape of the corrugated metal. As you can see we have a perfect fit. And you can also see what I used instead of the toothpicks. These are Q-tip tubes. I chose them because of their large diameter. They're sturdy enough to shape the aluminum foil. I cut strips of wood as spaces between the tubes. Instead of measuring I used the tubes to determine the correct position for the spacers. I used PVA glue to glue them into place. The last strip was glued to the front edge. And some dry fitting with the tubes. The upper jaw was built accordingly. The rear edge was sanded into a rounded shape like I did it with the prototype. This piece of wood will be used as trim for the rear edge after the hinges are glued into place. I used contact glue for the tubes. You need to apply a lot of pressure to the surfaces but once the glue has cured you have a very strong bond. I must admit that it would have been smarter to cut the tubes to length before gluing them into place. I did it with the tubes of the upper jaw. Then I added the trim to both sides and the front of the low jaw. To make it look good I sanded all edges into a round shape. Here are the channels for the hinges. Proper measuring makes for a perfect fit. Let's go on with the upper jaw. After dry fitting I thought I had to add a thin stripe of styrene to the rear edge to make the jaws close tightly. I found out that it was unnecessary later and so I removed it. All tubes glued securely into place. Here you see that both jaws fit as close to perfection. Much better than the first attempt. Time to add the hinges. In spite of my bad experience with the wooden hinges, I wanted to use the coffee stirrers again. I remembered a trick I used when I wanted to drill holes into MDF boards. To avoid splintering, I put a piece of normal household masking tape onto the area into which I wanted to drill a hole. Then I poked into the mark again, but this time I started with a 1mm drill bit. That went very well, but after I drilled with a 2mm bit I had the same issues again. I was fed up with it and so I decided to use ABS plastic of the same thickness. I glued the hinges into place using CA glue. Proper alignment. Snug fit. Then the trim for the rear edge was glued into place and all edges sanded into a round shape. You can see that I sanded the sand portion down to level with the jaw. Here are the hinges and spaces for the upper jaw. The spaces were too thick and had to be sanded thinner. Now they fit perfectly. A lot of dry fitting and sanding was necessary, but it was worth it. Here's the stabilizer that was transferred from the prototype to the real deal. This time it's made from ABS plastic and I used CA glue for the assembly. 
Again, all edges were sanded into a rounded shape. To drill the holes into the inner hinges, I put both jaws together and held them tightly. That wasn't too difficult, and this way I avoided any kind of physical force on the hinges while making corrugated metal sheets. The only force is a rotation, so I expect the tool to last for a very long time. Of course I used carbon fiber rod as pivot, since this material can stand a lot before it shows wear and tear. I guess you will have asked yourself why I built these rather complicated hinges. You can see why when you imagine the way the jaws close. The rear edge of the upper jaw grabs the aluminum foil and holds it tightly before the jaws close completely. That keeps the foil from moving in the process. Adding the side trim and a sharp edge to the front finished the work on the upper jaw. Again I added an anti-skid pad. This shows how small the tool actually is. Time to cut some aluminum sheets for the first attempts. For a good result, I burnish the foil lightly onto the rear edge using And here's the result. I expected to have to burnish the complete foil after opening the press, but I was happy with the result. I was so happy that I made a couple of corrugated sheets. Last but not least, here's a comparison of prototype and final version. As I mentioned, both tools work and you can choose which one you prefer if you want to build it yourself. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask. That's it for now. Let's keep it simple.